In the cytosol of E. coli, the genomic DNA has a sigma X promoter sequence and many other promoter sequences. During the sigma cycle, first of all, a sigma X subunit binds to RNA polymerase. This binding produces an RNA polymerase holoenzyme. So, this RNA polymerase holoenzyme has a core and a bound sigma subunit. Here, the sigma subunit is the sigma X subunit. The bound sigma X subunit then guides RNA polymerase to bind to DNA at sigma X promoter sequence. During transcription initiation, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme unwinds the DNA. As a result, a transcription bubble is formed. This transcription bubble creates a region of single-stranded DNA where transcription can take place. Only one of the two DNA strands, the template strand, is generally transcribed. RNA synthesis is complementary to the template strand and is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Once the RNA synthesis is initiated, means the transcription elongation is initiated, the sigma X subunit dissociates stochastically. This sigma subunit is replaced by NOS A. In NOS A bound state, RNA polymerase continues elongation. When RNA polymerase reaches a terminator sequence, RNA synthesis halts. NOS A and completed mRNA then dissociate from the RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase then dissociates from the DNA. In principle, the free RNA polymerase can bind to any sigma subunit. Here the sigma Y subunit and forms an RNA polymerase holoenzyme. This sigma subunit may be sigma 70 or another. This bound sigma Y subunit then guides the RNA polymerase to bind to DNA at sigma Y promoter sequence. So, we can say that the type of sigma subunit bound to RNA polymerase determines the promoter to which the RNA polymerase will bind in the next round of RNA synthesis. After the binding of RNA polymerase holoenzyme to the sigma Y promoter sequence in the DNA, transcription initiation occurs. Now, an important point. The protein NOS A has relative molecular mass of 54,430. Please like, subscribe and share.